ready to praise the Lord. Yahweh.
Blessed Sunday, everyone. Wow, let us praise the Lord together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And in Psalm 105 says, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds to all the nation. Purihin po natin muli ang ating Panginoong Diyos. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And are you excited to hear God's message today? Ako po, excited po ako to inspire you to study the Word of God Word of God, more and more. No po. So, uh, this is our topic for today, bottoms up. Uh, don't worry, uh, I'm not here to teach you to get drunk. <laughs> no po, hindi po ako magtuturong mag-inuman po tayo. Pero I'm here to teach you what's the meaning of this word, bottoms up. Maybe you have heard it or maybe you have used it. And uh, ano bang meaning nito? It means, finish your drink. Finish it. No po. Yan po, kaya pag sinasabi natin, bottoms up, ayan, finish it. In other words, na po, uh, pag yan po ay inirelate natin sa ating buhay. When we relate those words in our life, uh, we people, we, we are good in starting something. We are good in starting up something, but we are a bad finisher. Marami tayong sinisimulan. Siguro habang sinasabi ko to na pro-process po natin sa isip natin, marami tayong sinimulan, marami rin tayong hindi tinapos. No po. At meron pong nagsalita, no po, meron siyang isang quote, sabi niya, it's not how you start that's important, but how you finish. Maybe we have a good start, or maybe we had a bad start, and maybe, you know, we don't know what happened. But what's important in life is, 
how did we finish it? Na po. In our Christian walk, in our faith walk, how are we going to finish this faith that we have? So today, I would like to bring you to the life of Apostle Paul, St. Paul. Na po. He had a bad start. Napakasama ng simula niya. Ano ba ang simula ni Paul? Na po? Siya po ay nagsimula ng wala lang naman, pumapatay lang naman ng tao. <laughs> That's how he started. Everyone, everyone who believes in the way, everyone who follows the way, which is Jesus Christ, kailangan tapusin yan, chugiin yan. Until finally, the Lord God caught up with him and then there, there was a total change in his life. Total change. And then, siya po ay uh, naging example. Siya po ang exemplify Siya po ang halimbawa, ano ba ang isang Kristiyano? Paano ba dapat lumakad ang isang Kristiyano? And he wrote something before he his life uh, ended. Siya po ay gumawa ng isang liham para kay Timothy. Ito po ang kanyang sinasabi. No po? We will now have a glimpse on how he would be ending his life or should I say how his life would end. Ito po ang sabi niya sa verse 6, 2 Timothy chapter 4. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. Can you imagine? Alam niya na na malapit-lapit na ang kanyang departure date. And yet, very composed. Buong-buo ang loob. Very confident in writing this. And he made an assessment of what he has done for the Lord. What he had contributed into this world. And this would be his assessment to himself. Ito ang kanyang sabi. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept my faith. I pray that when it's my time to depart, I pray that I can say the same. Can we bow our heads and let us pray? Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing us into your church. And thank you, Lord, for bringing the people online watching this, this service. My prayer is, Lord, that your word, Lord God, be so alive that it will penetrate our heart, soul, mind, and spirit and change us to become <clears throat> a better person. I commit to you this wonderful day. Let your Holy Spirit hover in this place. And this I pray in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen and amen. Sige po, palakpakan natin sandali ang Panginoon. And so, uh, ano ba ho yung being poured out as a drink offering? You know, last Sunday, Pastor Ronald had preached about this verse also. No po? Ito po ang kanyang tinakil. But today, I would love to dig a little bit, a little, a little bit more deeper. Nalalalim po tayo dito. No? Ano ba ho yung being poured out? as a drink offering. And for us to understand that, I would love to bring you back first to the Old Testament in Numbers chapter 15, verse 1. And it says here, And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have come into the land, you are to inhabit. When you are about to enter the promised land. Meaning to say, at that point, they were still in the wilderness. Sila po ay nasa desierto pa. And it spells so much, so much suffering, so much hardship. And so now that you are about to enter the promised land, which the Lord is giving you, sabi nga po, ang gagawin ninyo, you are to make an offering by fire to the Lord. A burnt offering or a sacrifice to fulfill a vow or as a free will offering or in your appointed feast to make a sweet aroma to the Lord from the herd or from the flock. In other words, no po, when you are already in the land, make an offering. And what an insight here, no po, that when we give our offering, when we give our tithes and our offering, it is a sweet aroma. It would be a perfume before the Lord. Mabango po siya para sa Panginoong Diyos. And he continued, And you shall bring as the drink offering half a hin of wine as an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. Two and a half liters of wine that you would go, you're going to offer to the Lord. In other words, there, there was so much hardship for you and when you are about to enter the land or you are inhabiting the land already, there would be a celebration. Hardship, and then there will be a celebration. So now, let us go back to Paul. No po? Ano ba ho yung kay Paul's account? Paul, yung kanya pong ministry, no po? it is full of sacrifices. Punong-puno-punong pagsasakripisyo. 
Kaya pag tayo po ay naglilingkod sa Panginoong Diyos, hindi po ang hinahanap ay benepisyo. Pansin nyo, ang, 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 ang ibinibigay po natin ay sakripisyo. We give sacrifice of praise. We give sacrifice of worship. We want to sacrifice. It's, we're not looking for benefits. It's a sacrifice. And for Paul, he had sacrificed so much for the word of the Lord, for God himself. Na po. And then later on, eh, talagang time to depart. Time to say goodbye. Na po. Buti siya, alam niya, na malapit-lapit na. na uh, may departure. Tayo po ba eh, may departure date na? I pray, wala pa po tayong departure date. Na po. Si Paul, meron po siyang departure date. Na po. At uh, saan ba siya pupunta? Heaven or hell? Uh, tayo ba ho? Saan ba ho tayo pupunta? Anong gate ka ba papasok sa iyong pagde-depart? Alam ba ninyo kung saan tayo gate? No? Pag sanabi mo, ah, heaven. No po. Yung iba naman, ah, sabi niya, hindi pa ako sure. <laughs> hindi ka pa sure. No? At pag hindi ka pa sure, no po, sa dalawang yan, alam niyo po, kaya tayo ninenervyo sa totoo lang. No? Uh, lalo na sa panahon ng pandemic, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng anxiety attack Kapag hindi ka pa sure, if you are not sure where to go, which gate are you going to enter, talagang nakakatakot. No? At uh, ngayon po, pwede mong isure yan pag tinanggap mo si Kristo Jesus bilang iyong Panginoon at Tagapagligtas. Ngayon, pwede. No po. Pag tayo po ay chugi na, no po, I, I could play jokes with death no po, because I'm sure where I'm going. Uh, pag tayo po ay chogi na, we cannot decide. But while we are alive, we can make a decision. Make sure where you are going. And today, uh, I don't want to miss this point. Uh, if you want to make sure where you're going right now, we want to go to heaven. We just have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And before I proceed with the message, we will make a short prayer. If you will pray with me, kung ikaw yung hindi pa sure, pray this prayer with me, make it sincere, and you could see the change in life right now. Sabayan niyo po ako, Panginoong Jesus, patawarin niyo ako sa aking kasalanan. Panginoong Heso Kristo, tinatanggap kita sa aking puso bilang aking Panginoon at tagapagligtas. I surrender to you my life. From the day, today onward, Heavenly Father, teach me and lead me to live a holy life. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer sincerely, your name has been written in the book of life in heaven. Amen. Sige po, palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. So, po. so uh, maganda yung sure, yung maganda yung pupuntahan natin. No po. So, for Paul, no po, kung siya po ay merong departure, merong arrival kasi. Kaya hindi niya problema yun eh, yung departure. Maganda yung a-arrival niya ron. Na po. Maganda yung pupuntahan niya ron. Mas maganda pa kesa sa kung meron tayo rito. There is eternal life. Kaya po siya masaya. And when there is eternal life, meron pong celebration. Yan po ang account ni Pablo. Na po. Yan po ang summary ng buhay ni Pablo. So, when he was making his assessment, As a minister of God, as a minister of Christ, he was making an assessment. And this is his assessment to himself. No po? Just like the cross, no po? yung assessment ni Pablo, yung, yung apat na yon, ang assessment niya, sabi niya, uh, may sakripisyo, just like the cross, merong departure, merong arrival, no po? at merong celebration. No po? At ito po ay inilagay ni Pablo ang kanyang sakripisyo, ang kanyang departure, ang kanyang arrival, celebration, at ito ang kanyang assessment sa kanyang sarili. Sabi niya, I fought a good fight. Past tense. I have finished my race. I have kept my faith. And today, this is what we're going to dissect. No po? When he said, I have fought a good fight, it means there was a struggle. No po? It was agonizing. It was gruesome. No po? Uh, ito po ay Uh, bigay todo ang laban sa kanyang pananampalataya. Bigay todo ang kanyang buhay kristyano. Tayo po ba pag tayo po'y nananampalataya, bigay todo ba tayo sa pagmamahal natin sa Panginoong Diyos? Naku, lima lang po. No? Bigay todo na binibigay natin sa Panginoong Diyos. And here is Paul, he was saying, My, I fought a good fight. When he say fought, struggled hard. No po? Uh, alam niyo po yung struggle. Everybody would be experiencing it. 
struggles in life. Everyone will be experiencing this. Whether you are a Christian or you are not a Christian, whether you are a believer or a non-believer, or maybe you belong to another denomination, struggle is universal. And when Christians are struggling, how do we fare? How do we fight in life? Pag nag struggle po tayo, pag tayo po ay lumalaban, paano ba tayo lumalaban sa ating buhay? No po, pa, an, an, ano ba ang ginagawa ba ho natin? Uh, tayo po ba ay nakaka-encourage or hindi po tayo nakaka-encourage? So this this is struggling, no po, it is like a metamorphosis. Huwag natin pakikailaman pag may nag i struggle Kunyari, meron pong kristyanong nag i struggle hindi ko ho kagad pinapasok. No po, uh, I do not immediately enter into it and be the Savior. No po, no. Sometimes, struggling is needed so that you will become a beautiful butterfly. Meron pong cute na caterpillar, mag i struggle po yan. Pero pag in mo yung kanyang pag i struggle pag you disturb the cocoon, it will not turn out to become beautiful butterfly. Same goes with Christians. When we are going through this struggle in this pandemic, uh, tinitignan ko ho muna personally, no, kung paano papasukin o hindi. Kasi baka, yung struggling kasi po, no, yung, when you struggle, it makes you stronger, even more stronger. When you struggle, you become a better Christian. You become a better person when there is struggles in life. I remember my son, no po, uh, siya po ay laking Sunday school, laro-laro, masaya siya sa simbahan, maraming kaibigan, no po, laro-laro lang po siya. No? And then, nung inata na, no po, siya po ay magiging leader na ng isang ministry. And when he became a leader, he encountered a problem, a big problem. So ito po yung, ang tawag ko po dito ay yung kanyang first blood sa ministry. Wow. Hindi niya akala ay may ganung problema pala sa church, no po. Biglang na culture shock siya. So he he came home, no po. Tinitingnan ko po siya tulala, hindi hindi makakausap. Pinapanood ko po siya. I would love to enter into his fight but I don't want to. I prefer not to. Why? He would be struggling. He had he has to complete that. He has to go through it so that he would become a better leader, a better Christian. So, sa ating mga struggle ngayon, ano ba ang pinagdadaanan natin? Yung struggle ng ating mga anak, paano ba ho natin sila inaalalayan? Hindi pinakikailaman, kung hindi inaalalayan. At pag kailangan kailangan na, eh, andito naman kami. Uh, pero ayaw ko po na yung struggle, eh, hindi na naging turn hindi na nag-turn out ng beautiful butterfly no po and so here is Paul no po sabi niya i have fought a good fight struggle uh, agonizing gruesome and when he said good fight it would be inspiring there are fights that are boring there are boxing matches that are boring to watch. Nakakaantok, nanonood ka ng boxing, action, pero nakakatulog ka. Naintindihan niyo po, ibig ko sabihin. But there are matches, that, that there are fights that are good, that uh, it is breathtaking, it is exciting, it is motivating, it is captivating. And here is Paul, sinasabi niya, na ang aking buhay, Kristiyano, ay inspiring. And that is what I want to, to have, yun, that's the life that I want to have. Gusto ko po, nang i-inspire ako. Ang ating panahon, ang ating pagkakristyano, lalo na sa panahon ng bande, pandemya. Ang ating bang pananampalataya ngayon ay breathtaking. Pag pinanood nila tayo, wow, ba't ganun sila? Exciting, motivating, motivate sila sa atin. Nakaka-influence tayo. Ano po? Captivating. Is this how we project our faith? Not for our glory, of course, but for the glory of God. And for Paul, he was saying, I fought a good fight. Are you fighting a good fight? Especially in the times of struggles right now. Are you fighting a good fight? Let me show you a glimpse of how Paul fought a good fight. Ito po ay mahaba, pero pinaiksi ko. And if you want to see the whole thing, read chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians. This is just a portion of it. Sabi niya dito, sabi ni Pablo, 
Are they ministers of Christ? Kasi may kumay question sa kanyang credential. May kumay question sa kanyang pagiging apostol. So sabi niya, are they ministers of Christ? Sabi niya, I speak as a fool. Why? He doesn't want to write this. He doesn't want to brag about this. Nevertheless, he had no choice but to put it there. And praise the Lord, it's there. So sabi niya, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am even more. Alagad kayo ng Diyos. Lalo na ako. Lalo na ako. Bakit? In labors, pag, sa pag, pag may ministeryo, in labors, more abundant. Walang makakapantay sa inyo. Grabe, no? In stripes, yung nilatigo, above measure. Magpakitaan tayo ng sugat. Gusto mo? Ilan ang latigo mo? Sa akin, above measure. In prisons, more frequently. And those words, yung, yung, I could relate with in labor, more abundant. I can relate with that. With stripes, hindi pa ako nalalatigo eh. Pasensya na. In prison, I cannot relate with that. But in death, this I can relate. In death, often, maybe not as many as uh, what Paul had faced, but In death, somehow we have faced death in our lifetime. Right now, we are facing death right before our, our, our very midst. Merong spirito ng kamatayan. And alam niyo po ako ay, uh, dito makakarelate ako eh. Hindi ko po hinahanap ang kamatayan. Ba't ko siya hahanapin? <laughs> Nasusundan niyo ba ako? Hindi ko siya hinahanap. Pero pag nandyan ka, haharapin kita. Naunawaan niyo ba ang ibig ko sabihin? Hindi kita hahanapin. Di ba? Ba't kita hahanapin? Ba't kita bibigyan ng importansya? Pero pag nandyan ka, haharapin kita. And for Paul, no po, in death, often, madalas. Ganito po lumaban si Pablo sa kanyang pananampalataya. Ito ang standard ng pananampalataya. Ito ang standard ng pagiging kristyano. Sabi ko, pag ganito ang standard, ang layo ko pa. Ang layo. Na- nauunawaan niyo ba ho yung ibig ko sabihin? Ganito niya ipinaglaban ng kanyang pagmamahal niya sa Diyos. Ganito yung kanyang passion. At pag tinig na ko po yung aking sarili, layo, sobrang layo, sabi ko. But anyway, sa ating panahon ngayon, ire-relate lang po natin yun no? kung paano mo inilalaban ang iyong uh, pananampalataya. No? Paano mo inilalaban ang iyong buhay. Ganito na lang muna, kahit huwag na muna ang pananampalataya. Paano mo inilalaban ng iyong buhay? Meron po ako napanood sa television, sa isang balita, ano po, meron pong isang uh, stewardess. She was working with Cebu Pacific ano po, for three, three years ano po, as a steward, ano po, stewardess. And of course, nagpandemya, walang trabaho, na-retrench, goodbye. And uh, anong ginawa? Na-depress. Ilang linggo, na-depress, iyak, nagmukmuk. Ano po? That uh, finally she realized no po, na walang kauuwian ang pagmumukmuk. Kailangan lumaban ng buhay. Amen? Kailangan lumaban ng buhay. At paano siya lumaban? Aba, ganda ng pagkakalaban niya. Nagtinda ng LPG. Pareho pa rin ang forma. No? Sabi ko pambihira, lumaban ng buhay. Titinda siya ng LPG. Sabi ko nga eh, kung ito ang magtitinda ng LPG sa akin, sampu kagad ang bibilhin ko. Wow, di ba? Laban ng buhay. Yes, maybe the glamour is not there anymore. Yung, yung, yung makeup, makeup, wala na. Okay, pero ang, ang puntos mo kasi to survive. We have to survive. We have to metamorphosize. <laughs> uh, malay natin, baka maging tycoon to ng LPG. We don't know. How do you fight your battles? She's fighting hers. Ako po ay na-inspire, breathtaking, exciting, motivating, na uh, captivating. What's your story? In the times of pandemic, what is your story? Lalo ka na may pananampalataya ka. Lalo na kasama mo si Kristo. Eh, panalo ka na, kapatid. Paano mo ba inilalaban yan? Nakakatuwa, no? Pareho pa rin ang forma. <laughs> Hindi nawawala yung forma na yun. Ho? So this is uh, 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 what Paul was saying, I fought a good fight. And he continued, he said, I have finished the race. Meaning complete. Bottoms up. 
I have finished my race. How about the race that you're running right now? Do you have plan to finish it? How about this faith that you have right now? This faith that you are exercising right now. Do you have plan to finish it? Finishing it strong? We have a problem in finishing. Talaga pong yan po ang mga tao. Eh, no? Hirap tayong tumapos. No? Uh, tignan niyo po ito no? sa pag-aaral. Mga kabataan na naririto. Alam ko pong mahirap mag-aaral ngayon. Pero makinig kayo. Finish your school, please. Ito po ang statistics ng DepEd. No po? Sabi po ng DepEd, 7 out of 10 kids will complete elementary. Tatlo, nawala na. 7 out of 10 kids will complete elementary. Of those 7, only 4 will complete high school. And out of those 4, only 1 will proceed university. Wow. Finish your school. Yung pupunta pa sa university, baka mabuntis pa yun. Yung pupunta sa university, baka wala pang pantuition yun. Yung pupunta sa university, baka magsyabu pa yun. Ako, pambihira. Finish your school. We have a problem with finishing. In our work, when, when you have work, finish it. Do not procrastinate. Do not, do not say, bukas na, bukas na. Finish your work. No po. Sa mga may utang, finish your loan payment. Amen ba yun? Ayun ang mga may utang sumagot. No? Biro lang po. No? <laughs> yung mga may utang, tapusin natin yung ating pagkakautang. Amen ba yun? No? May problema tayo sa pagtatapos eh. In marriage, finish your marriage. What do I mean by finish your marriage? What God has joined together, let no man separate. Finish it. Finish your gender. Do not change it. Pambira pati gender mo, hindi ka, hindi ka mapakaling. We're having problems with finishing. Finish your life. What do I mean by that? Do not end your life. This is a God-given life for you. Hiram mo lang yung buhay mo. Wala tayong karapatang tapusin yan. Amen ba ho yun? Paglingkuran mo ang Diyos ng tapat. Amen. Sige po, talakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Problem with finishing. Kaya pag tinitignan ko po ulit yung cross, pag, pag, pag inaaral ko po mga bagay-bagay na ito, nagre-reflect po ako. Pag tinitignan ko ang cross, ano sabi ni Lord? Wow. It is finished. My God is a finisher. Paul was a finisher. And this is the spirit that has been given to us. A finisher. So we have to finish strong. Amen ba yun? Sige nga po, palakpakan natin muli ang Panginoon. Pero ito po ang itsura ng manggagawa. Ano po? Sa pag nagre-reflect po ako, tinitingnan ko, ano ba ang itsura ng manggagawa? Sa aking 31 years in ministering to this church, ito po ang itsura ng mga nakasalumuha ko pong manggagawa. May mga manggagawa na for a season. They are here, ano po? they work hard, ano po? let's say three months, psh, work hard, and they're gone. They're nowhere to be found. Wala na. Basta na wala lang. Gone. Parang bula. May ganun po. Meron naman pong mga manggagawa seasonal. They're here today. They're gone tomorrow. They, they'll be back next month. <laughs> Meron pong ganun. Po. Uh, andito, trabaho, trabaho. Nawala. Po. Nagtampo. Sumama ang loob. Uh, nag-iba ang panahon. Uh, nag-iba ang kulay ng medyas. Po. Nag-iba ang timpla ng mundo. Nag-iba ang timpla ng climate. They're here. They're gone. And they're back. Seasonal. Depende sa mood. Depende sa kondisyon. Depende kung ano ang trouble na dumadating sa kanyang buhay. My service to the Lord, it depends. Seasonal. Meron pong ganun. No. Meron po namang mga for all season. Parang mega star. No. For all season. And I'm praying that the church can develop people na manggagawa na for all season, in good times or in bad times, hindi jaan naka-relate, hindi jaan naka-depende ang paglilingkod ko sa isang Diyos na buhay. Sa good times and bad times, hindi jaan naka-relate. Maglilingkod ako sa Diyos. Bakit? Banal ang Panginoong Diyos. Siya ang aking pinaglilingkuran. Amen ba yun? Hali, sige po, palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. 
Because of who you are, I give you worship. I give you glory. Kaya ako nagsisilbi. Yun ang dahilan noon. Po. And so, finally, no po, ang sabi ni Pablo, I fought a good fight. I have finished my race. I have kept my faith. I have guarded my faith. You know why? Why did he say this? Opinion ko lang naman to. No? Because sometimes when we fight hard, we drop the ball. Because sometimes when we run so hard, so intense, we drop the baton. Nabibitawan po natin yung bola. Nabibitawan natin yung ating pananampalataya. And here is Paul saying, yes, I fought a good fight. I have run my race. And I have kept my faith intact. So in times of pandemic, are we keeping our faith intact? There are struggles. We are having a hard time. But do we keep our faith intact? Alam niyo po, uh, ito pong nangyayari po sa atin ay pag binabasa ko po ang Biblia, no? ito po ay patikim sa mga mangyayari pa sa mga susunod na panahon. Patikim pa lang po. Basahin ko po ang ibig kong sabihin. Let me bring you to Revelation chapter 13. No po? And this is the prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, chapter 13 verse 15, He, that's, that He is the Antichrist, He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, yung halimaw, and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Pag hindi mo sinamba itong beast na ito, itong halimaw na ito, eh patayin ka. Walang sinabi itong panahon natin na ito. Ito po ay appetizer. And it continued, verse 16, The Antichrist causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And that no one may be able to buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And of course, you know, what's that number? 666. By, no one can buy or sell. Walang makakabili. Bakit ko sinasabing patikim ito? Kasi ngayon, pwede ka pang bumili. Take out lang. Yung take out pa lang, uh, food panda, grab, take out pa lang. Hirap na hirap na tayo. Hirap na hirap. Tama, hirap. Tama ba ho? Walang alpresco, walang dine-in. Pabili, take out. Hirap! Grabe. Reklamo na tayo. The time will come, you cannot buy or sell. Boss, pa take out. Do you have the mark? Do you have the mark? Walang mark, walang take out. Kaya ang nangyayari po ngayon ay patikim. Kung paano maninindigan ang Kristiyano. Noong unang panahon, nung nababasa ko po itong verse na to, bata pa ho ako noon, no? nababasa ko itong verse na to, sabi ko, ang hirap ng panahon na to, ayoko dumating dito. Pero palagay ko, sabi ko sa aking sarili, kung dumating sa panahon na yan, palagay ko, maraming Kristiyano na maninindigan. May mga conviction na ilalaban nila ang kanilang pananampalataya even if they cannot buy or sell. Sabi ko po yun sa aking sarili. Nung naging pastor na po ako at sa panahon na po na ito at tinitignan ko po itong pandemya kung anong ginagawa sa mga born again, marami kaya maninindigan sa kanilang pananampalataya. Sabi ko, I am se- I'm having second thought. Kasi sa patikim, sa appetizer, hirap na hirap na po tayo. Sa appetizer pa lang. So, ano ba ho ang ginagawa sa atin ng pandemya? Ang tawag ko po dito ay faith subtle erosion. Yan po ang ginagawa ng pandemya po sa atin. No? At uh, ano ba ho ang ibig ko sabihin? Religious routine being disrupted. Nadi-disrupt po yung religious routine. Dati po, no, uh, sa panahon ng aking mga magulang, ano po, Ah, pag magbe-birthday, may handa, simba ka muna. Di ba? Mga magulang natin. Ah, may excursion. Oh, pop up, excursion, di pwede. Simba ka muna. Ganun po sa amin. Eh. No. Ah, may reunion. Ah, reunion, okay. Simba ka muna. No. At yun na po yung nakalakihan ko. At ah, bagamat hindi ko po siniseryoso yung pagsimba nun, alam nyo naman po ang buhay ng inyong pastor. No. Magpapaalam ako sa nanay ko, Nay, 
Magsasabong na po ako. Magsasabong na. Sasabihin ng nanay ko, Oy, simba ka muna. Opo, si Simba ho muna. <laughs> Bago pumunta sa sabungan. Grabe, di ba? Yung pala, sa kakasimba mo, may naipapasok sa isip mo, no? sa iyong puso. And finally, no po, dumating po ang COVID, your religious routine is disrupted. Nabigyan tayo ng magandang dahilan para hindi po pumunta sa simbahan. Wala tayong magagawa ron. No po. Paano kaya yung conviction? Hindi. Itong conviction na non-negotiable. Meron po isang tao no po, sa Amerika. May-ari po siya ng Chick-fil-A. No po. Wala pa ho niya sa Pilipinas. No po. At ang kanya pong negosyo ay 2,700 outlets. Ang, ang kanya pong sales, 15 billion a year. Wow, laki, no? Ano po yung kanyang tayo? Ano yung kanyang prinsipyo? Ito po yung may-ari, ano po? Ang sabi niya, ito po yung secret ng kanyang success. I was not so committed to financial success that I was willing to abandon my principles and priorities. Pambihira, no? Hindi ako ganun ka-attack umaman para bitawan ko ang aking mga conviction at prinsipyo. Hindi ganon. Non-negotiable tong prinsipyo ko. Kung walang pagyaman, okay lang. Basta I have to keep my principles and my priorities. And what's that? Ito ang isa sa mga, sabi niya, one of the most visible example of this is our decision to close on Sunday. So, the chicks fillet, no po, it's close on Sunday. Yung fast food chain, What? It's close on Sunday. So pag dumaan ka sa highway ng Amerika, ipinopromote po lahat ng kakainan, exit here, ano po? Their restaurant, their fast food is close on Sunday. And yet the Lord will honor that kind of conviction. Kung kailan malakas ang kita, linggo ba sarado ka? Inu-honor pala ni Lord yung ganung mga tayo, yung mga tayong non-negotiable to eh. pinagmamalaki kita, Panginoon Diyos. Sa'yo lahat galing to eh. Bakit ba? Inu-honor pala ni Lord. Eh ngayon, dinisrupt yun. Disrupted. And so, and so, the church has provided a very good alternative and that is online. Wow. Praise the Lord. We have online uh, online ministry. Praise the Lord on this. And the church, we are investing heavily on this right now. Medyo na late tayo rito. And now, ang inyong tithes and ang inyong offering ay nailalagay po rito para ma-ramp up, ma-level up natin ang mga equipment po natin no po, patungkol sa online. This is a good alternative. And let me say it, no po, though this is good, How many times I have said this? Though this is a good alternative, the online, it is still an alternative. Nobody can beat what we're having here right now. It is good. Yet, it is still an alternative. And it would be hard no po, na na-disrupt yung aking, na-disrupt yung aking religious routine and nagkaroon ng alternative, no po, be careful because I don't want the people online to slide on the third item that I'm going to show. Don't slide here. And what's that? Biblical conviction is being compromised. Huwag naman tayo uuwi dito yung lumalab na una. Bakit? Kasi nagkaroon tayo ng magandang dahilan. Safety reasons, siyempre naman. Bawal, lahat, etc. Naiintindihan po natin yon. Safety reasons. At ang church po ay nagbigay ng convenience sa bahay ka na lang at the comfort of your home. Okay na. O ayos na. Pero bakit ganun? May anxiety attack pa rin. Bakit ganun? Tapos, faith is being eroded. This is not right. Huwag na tayo mag slide down. Yes, it is a good alternative but don't slide down into this formula. Especially for, those, especially for those watching online. Ayokong nililipad na yung pananampalataya ako. Ayokong hindi ko na nailalaban yung pananampalataya ko. Ayokong, asensya na ho ah, ayokong pananampalatayang 
puro dahilan. Kailangan inilalabang ko to. Pangapat, no po? Pangapat, shallow biblical foundation is happening. Why? Yung ating mga anak, nakakalungkot. Nadudulog ang puso ko. Yung aking mga apo, hindi nakakapag-Sunday school. Tayong mga magulang na nasa bahay, I pray na tinuturoan natin sila ng foundation. Biblical foundation. Ang church, hindi makagalaw ngayon. May online, yes, I know, but ang, ang hirap ng bata, online, puro online. The Sunday school, it's not operational. Yung foundation ng mga bata, paano na yun? Umaasa po ako ngayon sa mga magulang sa ang simbahan, hindi makabuelo ron. Ako. Mga, mga magulang, teach your children the biblical foundation. Why? Pag wala. Pag hindi sila malalim, five years from now, pag nangyari na po yung revelation, hindi po ako nagpro-prophesy, pwedeng five years from now, mangyari yon. Or ten years from now, pwedeng mangyari yon. At kung nandito pa yung ating mga anak, at tatanungin ang ating mga anak, will you keep your faith or will you get the mark? Baka sabihin natin, baka sabihin ng ating mga anak, what a question. Just give me the mark. What a question. Uh, mahirap bang sagutin yan? Kailangan pa bang memorizing yan? Just give me the mark. Tatak na, tatak pa more. Bakit? Wala na yung pananampalataya eh. Hindi na lumalim eh. baka hindi naturuan ng magulang or tinitignan niya ang magulang dahil hindi, hindi nakikita ang Sunday School. Tinitignan ng mga magulang. Tay, paano ka ba lumalaban? Sa panahon ng pandemya. Nay, paano mo ba inilalaban ang iyong pananampalataya? Are you fighting a good fight? Are you running your race? Do your children see you perspiring as you run your race? And later on, we could tell them, Anak, I have kept my faith. Sa UFC, ganyan sila lumaban. Sa MMA, Mixed Martial Arts, basagan ng mukha, grabe. For what? For the prize money, for the trophy, for popularity, uh, etc., etc. Makikipagbasagan ng mukha yan para dun sa kap- kapiranggot na kayamanan. Talo pa. Talo pa. Sabi ko, pambira, paano itong pananampalataya na ito? Paano ko ba ilalaban? Ilalaban mo ba ito ng basagan ng mukha? Itong pananampalatayang meron ka, paano mo ba inilalaban ito? Are you fighting a good fight? Now we are challenged by the pandemic. Aatras ka ba? Or will you fight a good fight? Now is your chance. to fight a good fight. Finish the race. People are watching. Keep the faith. Marami tayong arena. No? Marami tayong arena. At gusto ko itong ipakita, not to brag, but somehow you could change the names and you have your own arena as well. But this is my arena. Ang arena ko, meron akong international arena. And in my international arena, I have to keep my conviction. my principle, non-negotiable. I have the national arena as a national overseer and same conviction, same principle, biblical conviction. I have the local church to take care of, principle, conviction. Lord, uh, nakakangalay minsan hawakan, pero you have to keep that faith. Meron pong mga institutions that is aligned with the church. Andiyan yung Keruso Christian Academy. Nandiyan yung WJ. Po, maraming institution. Fight a good fight. There is this what I call family arena. Just like you, I have problems of my own in my family. Just like you. And I have to fight a good fight. Aside from this all, may dinagdag pa yung pandemya. Paano ka lalaban? Paano ka ba tumatakbo? 
Paano mo hinahawakan ang iyong pananampalataya? Can I invite you to please rise? And so, I pray in our time, just like Paul, may we be able to say, Lord, I fought a good fight. I have run my race. I kept my faith. Dear God, Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing this church to open to your people. Pwede naman kami sarado. Pero ganito kami lumalaban, Panginoon. Hanggang hindi kami pinasasara, bubukas kami. Nalabang kami. Nalabang kami. Bubuhay kami ng mga tao sa pamamagitan ng iyong salita. Magbibigay ng pag-asa. Magbibigay ng katinuan. Magbibigay ng salita mo, Panginoong Diyos, para matuto pa kaming tumayo sa aming dalawang paa. And so, Lord, today, your children, Lord God, they are fighting their own battles in different arenas, business, work, financial, emotional, spiritual. Heavenly Father, my prayer is, Lord, teach us to fight a good fight. Hindi mo kami binigyan ng spirito na talunan. Binigyan mo kami ng spirito na mananalo. We are winners. And so, Lord, today, let your Holy Spirit hover over us. Minister to us right now. Bless us. Favor us. Protect us. Ayaw mo ikaw ang maipaglaban namin, Panginoong Diyos. Salamat sa pagkakataon na ito na ikaw ang aming ipaglalaban. Thank you for this time. And as we sing this song, let it be our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've tried so hard to see it Took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it He gave what we don't deserve And you take the broken things And raise them to glory You are my champion Giants for when you stand on defeat
Jesus Christ's name. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we so much appreciate Jesus Christ in our life right now. So much. Kung wala ka pa, paano na? Salamat sa iyo, Panginoon. At salamat muli, Panginoong Diyos, at kami ay bukas at nakakapagbigay ng pag-asa sa maraming taong nakikinig ng iyong mensahe ngayon. Inspire us today with your word. And before we leave your holy sanctuary, Lord God, we lift up to you our tithes and our offering, a sweet aroma for you, O Lord God. Bless us more so that we can be a blessing to so many, especially in the times of pandemic. And today, as we leave this place, I pronounce your blessing, I pronounce your favor, I pronounce your protection. I pronounce your peace upon your children. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a great Sunday. God bless you.